All right, in this video, I'm going to be going over the Algebra 1 review for Unit 1, where we're solving equations and inequalities. And so let's go ahead and get started. So it's telling us here that um, basically we need to solve the equation for x. Sometimes we say we're going to isolate x or get it all by itself. We want to get x equals a number. So that's our goal. And, uh, and in the process here, we're going to show our steps, and we're also going to explain how we went from one step to the next. So we distribute, or we combine like terms, or we use the inverse operation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now before we jump right in here, I know um, when I look at an equation like what we have here, it's important to know where to start. And in fact, the first place I would start is by simplifying. I want to simplify one or both sides as needed. All right, so that's step one. You can see that there's a lot of stuff to simplify on the left. And then the other thing I'm going to look for once I've simplified everything is I want to isolate x on one side, or at least I want to make sure there's not an x on both sides. If there is, I need to isolate x on one side. And see, once I do those two things, I'm going to end up with what I call a one or two step equation. And I'm going to have to do an inverse operation one or two times. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So again, we're simplifying. And so we're going to want to distribute here. We've got 6 times 2x is 12x, and 6 times 3 is 18. So we need to get rid of these parentheses is what we're really doing. Let's drop the minus 2x and bring down the minus 12. So here we have nothing to do on the right. It's all on the left. Notice we're still, we're not, we're still not simplified. Now before we go to the next step, I need to explain how I went from step 1 to step 2. And of course all we did was distribute the 6. Or we distributed 6. All right, so now to to go to the next step, notice again we're not simplified yet. We have some like terms here. 12x and a minus 2x is 10x. Let's bring down that 18 and the negative 12. And so we, we uh, combine like terms. We're going to use CLT for that. We basically subtracted 2x from 12x. All right, so notice now we are completely simplified on the left. And again, there's no need to isolate x on one side. It's already on one side only. And so it's going to take us two more steps here. Notice we're going to need to divide by 10 to get rid of that 10 since it's 10 times x. We'll do the opposite and divide. And we have a plus 18 to get rid of that 18. We're going to have to subtract 18 on both sides. And the thing we learn about solving these what I call two-step equations is we always add or subtract first. And so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to subtract 18 on both sides. And so we're going to be left with 10x is equal to negative 30. So what did we do? We did the inverse operation. We subtracted 18 from both sides. All right, and so we've got one more step to go. You can see that we still need to get rid of that 10. Since it's 10 times x, We'll do the opposite or the inverse of that and divide by 10. And we get x is equal to negative 3. So what did we do to go from step 4 to 5? Again, we did the inverse operation. And we divided both sides by 10. All right, let's move on to the next problem. So we're going to do the same thing here. So you can see this time, again, uh, we want to think simplify first. Is there anything to be simplified? Now, if you look on the left, these are not like terms, and so there's nothing I can do to combine them. Now, on the right, I can distribute. I want to get rid of the parentheses here. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite the left side, and then on the right, we're going to distribute. We get 5x plus 10. And so what did we do? We distributed the 5. All right, so now notice now on the left and the right, we're simplified. There's nothing more we can do on either side. And so now I'm thinking, wait a second, I've got x on both sides. I need to isolate x on one side. So I'd really like to get rid of 
Usually I like to keep my x on the left, although it really doesn't matter. So I want to get rid of this 5x here. And so I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So you could think of that as a plus 5x or a positive 5x. We're doing the opposite and subtracting 5x because I need to get rid of that whole term. And so we're going to get, of course, 3 and a negative 5 is negative 2. So we get negative 2x plus 5 is equal to 10. So what did we do? We did the inverse operation. We subtracted 5x on both sides. And again, our goal, we're trying to get x on one side only. All right, so now again, we have a two-step equation. And so we're going to want to add or subtract first. So we need to subtract 5 to do the opposite of adding 5. So subtract 5 on both sides. We get a negative 2x is equal to 5. And now i got to get rid of this negative 2. Now be careful. Sometimes students will add 2 to both sides here. You don't, you don't want to do that. It's negative 2 times x, the opposite of multiplying by negative 2 is dividing by negative 2. So we're going to divide each side by negative 2, but first I need to explain what I did going from step 3 to 4. I forgot to say that we subtracted 5 from both sides. Sorry about that. Let's, so now we're ready to divide by negative 2. Of course, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. We get 1x or x is equal to negative 5 halves. Now I want to remind you of something here. If you have 5 over negative 2, that's the same as negative 5 over positive 2, or you could put your negative out front. And so all of these are equal. They're a negative number, and if you wrote them as a decimal, it would be negative 2.5. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and write that here. And I need to remember, uh, what, what did we do going from step 4 to 5? We did that inverse operation thing, and we divided both sides by negative 2. All right, let's move on. So here it says, uh, Samantha solved the equation below, explain the inverse operation she used to go from step three to step four. Well, let's see, we're looking right here. Well, this is what's gone, the minus six there, so the opposite of subtracting six would be adding six. And if you added six to both sides, you, could, you can see that that's what she did. And so I'm going to go ahead and just put in the, the answer here. She added 6 to both sides of the equation. And you're giving an explanation, so you should do that in sentence form. So make sure you, you know, six, uh, write a complete sentence with a capital letter to start, a period to end. All right, number four, solve the equation. So Again, we're going to start by simplifying everything that we can. And so we've got some distributing to do on the left. And notice some like terms on the right. OK, so we have 3 times 4x, which is 12x, and 3 times 2 is 6. On the right, we're going to combine the 10x and 2x to get 12x and bring down the minus 7. And notice, again, we have no like terms on the left or the right. And so we're done. Although there is something kind of strange here. I don't know if you notice. We have 12x on both sides. Well, isolating x on one side only is our next thing that we're going to want to do. So we need to subtract 12x on both sides. And notice what happens here. This is one of our special cases. This is not normally what we get. Normally, we get a single answer that's the solution to our equation. That is not what happened here. We got a false statement, and that indicates that there is no solution. All right, let's move on to number five. All right, so here, um, notice there's nothing to simplify on either side. We do need to isolate x on one side. So let's go ahead and subtract 13x on both sides. Now, if you were to if if you added 9x to both sides, that would also work as well. Um, again, I tend to keep my x on the left, but either way is perfectly fine. So let's subtract 13x on both sides. We're going to get negative 22x minus 4 is equal to 7. And so notice we're down to a two-step equation. 
um, we always want to add or subtract first and so we'll add 4 to each side we need to reverse um, subtracting 4 so we'll add 4 we get negative 22x is equal to 11 now let me move this over here and let's divide each side by negative 22 because we're trying trying to get rid of this negative 22 if we're trying to solve for x here and so that's going to give us 1x is equal to 11 over negative 22. Now both of those are divisible by 11 and when we do that we're going to end up getting x equals negative 1 half. And again I just moved that negative out front. It can be in the numerator, denominator, or out front but it can't be in more than one spot. Alright so our solution is negative 1 half. Alright let's look at number 6. So again, um, well we have parentheses here, so we definitely have some simplifying to do. So let's go ahead and start by doing that. Again, we'll, we'll always start out by simplifying everything that we can. And then once we do that, we'll try to isolate x on one side only. And then at that point, we should be pretty close. We'll be one or two steps away using inverse operations. So we have 6x minus 24. Now notice on the right side we're going to be distributing negative 1. Negative 1 times 24 is negative 24. And negative 1 times a negative 6x will become a positive 6x, which we'll write as plus 6x. Again, notice how we have the 6x on both sides. In fact, we can change the order of those two terms on the right. Notice we still have a minus 24 or a negative 24. You could think of that as 6x plus negative 24, but we normally write it using subtraction. And notice the 6x is still positive when I changed the order. So, so we didn't do anything we're not allowed to, uh, we didn't do anything illegal here. All right, so we're good. All right, so now if you were to keep going, um, we would want to isolate x on one side. And, and so when we do that, we subtract 6x on both sides. This time we're not getting a false statement, we're getting negative 24 equals negative 24. And that's definitely true, and it's always going to be true. So what does this mean? Well, this is a true statement. It's an indication that we're going to have infinitely many solutions. But let me explain this in a little more detail. Because what are the solutions? We could actually figure out what they are. So 6x minus 24 equals 6x minus 24. Once we get to that step, notice it doesn't matter what x is. Because no matter what x is, these are always going to be equal. <laughs> 6x minus 24 will always equal 6x minus 24, no matter what x is. We call this an identity. And in fact, all real numbers are solutions. That's all the numbers that we can put on a number line. Fractions, decimals, everything we can write as, as a point on a number line. All right, let's look at number seven. So notice everything simplified here. And, um, but we do need to isolate y on one side only. Now, if you wanted to, you could subtract y on both sides. I don't see any problem with that. But again, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to keep my variable on the left. And so I'm going to subtract 9y on both sides. Notice we're adding 1 and negative 9, and that's negative 8y there. Bring down your minus 9. On the other side, you're going to have 11. And notice now we just have a two-step equation to solve. We'll add 9 to both sides. We get negative 8y is equal to 20 and then we'll divide by negative 8. Alright, so now keep in mind 20 and negative 8 are both divisible by 4. So divide 20 by 4 you get 5 and divide negative 8 by 4 you get negative 2. I'm just going to go ahead and put that negative out front and we get 5 halves. Now you might have said okay this is 10 over negative 4 and then 5 over negative 2 and then just move that negative out front. Now remember, um, let's, uh, 
let's also write this as negative 2.5. In fact, you'll notice in this problem you were asked to put your answer into this uh, little answer chart here like you would have on a standardized test, which is something we need to prepare you for, so that's why you're doing this. And so we, need, we can't put in the negative 5 halves, or that's not what they want us to put in. We're going to put in the decimal form. So we certainly have a negative here, negative 2.5, and then we'll fill out the bubbles, and as always, you want to make sure you fill them in nice and dark and completely, and so it'll look like that. All right, I'm going to stop this video here, and we'll start a new one.